Good morning, Houston, FloorDaily.net, and I'm Kim Parr. This morning, my guest is Jeff Mako. i spent his life in his family's business, Mako Floors, up in Wisconsin. Jeff, how you doing? I'm doing great, Kim. How about you? I'm good. I'm a little dismayed that this might be our last interview, at least in this role, right? <laughs> it certainly could be. Yeah. You're not going to have Dick Nixon to kick her out anymore. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so CEO to vice president to now consultant. It's all over Facebook. You're retired. Who's running Mako now? My youngest brother, Jim, is the new CEO and treasurer, and Scott Brown, uh-huh. who is a uh, equal partner with Jim, is the uh, president. Uh, those two now are sole owners of the corp. Uh, Mako's floor covering, Mako's commercial interiors, Mako Hattinger, uh, Mako Transportation. It's all them now. Okay, how about that? Now, what are you going to do next? I made an appointment this morning with a fishing captain to, to go out and do some fishing. I live on the Fox River in Green Bay, so I can fish right off my dock. But yeah. I'm uh, going to take a, uh, some time, do some fishing, play some golf. And if I get tired of those two things, then I'll find something else to do. All right. What was that fish that I saw on Facebook? It looked like it was about three feet long. I was fishing last week in Florida, and the last fish I think that I posted was a schnook. So mostly up here, I get musky, which is you know, just a huge, giant uh, game fish. Yeah. And probably one of the best walleye fisheries in the nation is the Bay of Green Bay. So yeah. I uh, can fish a lot for that as well. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about a couple of things. I thought it would be good to talk about, you spent how many years? 45. 45. How about that? Yeah. yeah. And you're under 60, right? Thanks, buddy. I am 61. That's right. Uh, started, started in 1976 with my father and one brother. I was still in high school, so I went to school half days. Then in the afternoon, I was the warehouse guy, and my dad and brother were the sales. Well, as you look back, what are some of the highlights of your career in the flooring business? Well, I think for us, I think it was expanding, and, and not just expanding, but expanding su- successfully. It's very difficult to open new stores and then try to manage them all. And I think through that time frame, we only closed one store and just continued to expand, but uh, more importantly, do that successfully. So we got bigger. You know, We bought a few things and bought a few companies, but I think all in all maintaining that continuity and a successful business over 45 years, you know, just growing it. Heck, I got some people that, that have been with us for 45 years. So yeah. that's that's kind of nice. We provided a lot of stable income for a lot of Wisconsin families, and we made a lot of beautiful homes in Wisconsin and Florida. What did you look most forward to? Well, as I kind of ascended through the ranks, so to speak, my contact with consumers was less and less and less. So, uh, you know, for the last 20 years, my function is primarily financial. I was the CEO and treasurer. So a lot of the stuff I did was me and the accountants, and that's that's nice. But what I look forward to most was the opportunities that I got to have contact with customers. So we would do well, home shows, and I would be the first one to volunteer to, to do the home show, or we would have private sales. Or you know, I'd love it when when somebody said a salesperson at such and such a city called in sick. I said, oh, you know, I'll fill in. So that's what I look forward to. Uh, the latter part of my career was really contact with consumers. I just didn't have much of that in the latter part of my career. Yeah. I was just up this past weekend in Sturgeon Bay and Sturgeon Bay Cut. In, I guess that's Door <laughs> County. The people yep. up there are super nice. So I'd say they're probably oh, yeah. pretty loyal to independent retailers, wouldn't you say? Oh, very much so. And we actually have a store there in Sturgeon Bay. Yeah. Uh, but you're, you're correct. We have... We've always told our staff we have three brands. The number one brand is, is the individual, the individual person. Yeah. Number two brand is, is Mako's, our company. And the number three brand is, you know, whatever product we were selling, Shaw and Mohawk. Yeah. Consumers really establish relationships with our people. Yeah. They weren't buying from Mako's. They were buying from Sue at Mako's. They weren't buying from Mako's. They were buying from their, their buddy Jerry at Mako's. Yeah. And I think that's really one of the keys to our success. As we look at the future of the flooring business, what are some of the challenges that we're going to face? Well, I think for the independent retailer, the biggest challenge is how do they differentiate themselves from Internet buying or the boxes? And I think that's really where the the independent retailer's strengths are going to lie. And frankly, their success and failure. You're either going to do good at really differentiating yourself from those Internet sellers or the big boxes, or you're going to die. You know, there's there's no in between here. So I think the biggest challenge that I see really is that independent retailers take the time and the effort to train their people on how to establish the relationships and get the discussion less on price and more on value. And I really think that's the difference. When it when it becomes a price negotiation, somebody is going to sell whatever you got cheaper. All they, all a consumer has to do is look hard. You know, she'll find somebody online that'll sell it or somebody else that'll sell it. So. 
ultimately, finding it cheaper is possible. But the, the real key for the independent retailer is how do you establish that credibility in your staff so that the consumer says, you know, I probably could get it a little bit less expensive at the Home Depot, but I really trust Jim here. I think what he's saying is, is true. So for the little bit of difference, I'm going with the independent retailer. And that's, I think, how they're going to win. The other challenge I really see is labor. Like anything, our industry is fighting, you know, with having enough quality, competent installers uh, to do the job. And I can tell you the only thing that I'm going to see that's going to make a difference there is we get wages um, to the point where uh, an independent flooring installer can make a good income. And then, you know, we convey that to these young kids saying, okay, you can go into debt at college if you wish, or, you know, you can come out and, you know, we'll, we'll start you off at 60 grand. And we'll teach you a trade. You're not going to have to learn anything. I mean, you'll have to learn it. You don't have to spend any money. We'll teach it. So I think if, if we can establish a decent trade or labor force, that'll be good. And that's really ultimately, I think, will differentiate the independent retailer from the boxes. Yeah. Let me ask you on that competition with the boxes. I know with some yeah. Delta faucet, you know, you've got plastic ingredients on the one you get at the home center, and you've got brass ingredients on the one you get at Ferguson's. Can't you use that example to say, why would you want to buy at the home centers? Because the flooring quality is better. That's what's sold to independent. Is that true, do you think? It is true if the salesperson is trained and smart enough to know the difference. Yeah. You're 100% right. So that's the key. We've got to tell the consumer well, you know, the situation we just had with Stainmaster, right? Yeah. This was the best brand that we had forever and ever and ever. Right. And at the time, it was a type 6, 6 nylon that was built better than other nylon. So yeah. we had some sizzle. We had, we had something to sell, uh, folks. Well, so now the independent retailer has to be able to say, you know, Mrs. Jones, I just want you to know that you could buy Stainmaster, but if you buy it at this box store, you might get polyester. So, you know, are you sure that's what you want? I can tell you the difference between polyester and nylon, um, and I think that's, you know, but, but the salesperson has to be trained. Yeah. So independent retailers got to invest that money uh, to train their staff in, in what is the best value for the consumer, not necessarily what is the cheapest price. We can always find something cheaper, but it's, it's a little bit harder to find, you know, something better at a cheaper price. Yeah. One, one of the blessings, potentially, that right down the road, this millennial that we've all been talking about, they kind of understand about buying local. So that, that could help, mightn't it? It might. And, you know, there, for a few years it made me nervous that, uh, you know, these types of buyers would only be Internet buyers. And, you know, yeah. my daughter tells me she bought a bed in a box, and I'm thinking, well, that's just weird. Yeah. I, I think, though, ultimately that if, if you get e-screwed, uh, you know, once in your life, then you tend to be a little more um, hesitant to jump into that, and it might be a little better to touch it and feel it, you know, and, and look that person in the eye. I mean, returning, um, you know, a book that you don't want uh, is pretty simple compared yeah. to, you know, returning a, a room full of carpet. So yeah. um, I, I really yeah. think that there's probably ways that we can... Um, the, you know, defeat that. Yeah. But again, I, I can't stress this enough. You're going to have to really take the time and effort to strain to train your independent uh, salesperson as to why. It, I'll tell you a good thing that most dealers can do. They should sit down with their staff and say, in in one week's time, I want you to give me ten reasons in writing why somebody should buy from us. Yeah. Specifically, write them down, uh-huh. and then keep going over that again and again and again. Why buy local? Well, you know, uh, because I'm here, and if something goes wrong, you don't have to fight right. with somebody online. You know, you're not just a, a number with uh, uh, with us. You know, your name and I spent money telling everybody in this city that it's me that's here. So I have a vested interest. So yeah. I think there's ways. It's just uh, it's going to take effort. That's for sure. All right. Is Lisa ready for you to be home every day? <laughs> not sure yet. We'll see how that goes. She'll get sick of me quite soon and, and shoot me out the door. But we'll see. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. Are you going to split your time between Florida and Green Bay? Yeah, we will. We have a home in Florida, yeah. and my goal in life is to say I no longer own a snowblower. Yeah. So okay. I'm, I'm hoping I can spend my winters down there and summers yeah. up here in Wisconsin. It's uh, gorgeous here now. I'm in Wisconsin. It's 80 degrees and sunny and dry and lovely. All right, Jeff. Good talk to you. Thanks for spending a little time with us here. Probably our last interview again. I've been talking to Jeff Mako, a consultant in the floor covering business, and you've been listening to Kempar and FloorDaily.net.